Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Five Bytes Podcast. On this week's episode, is VB Script set to be removed from the Windows operating system? NVIDIA address a driver update that caused high CPU utilization and hints that Windows 12 is on its way. For that and more, keep listening to this episode. And this episode is brought to you by my sponsors, Netrick's Policy Pack, where you use Group Policy, Policy Pack Cloud, or MDM to remove local admin rights, manage the lockdown applications, Java, browsers, and mitigate ransomware, plus more. And it's also brought to you by Numescent, the inventors of the first and only cloud-native container management platform for Windows desktops. And of course, also brought to you by ControlUp, end-to-end digital experience management for the work from anywhere era. ControlUp, happy users, happy IT. If you enjoy the show each week, you have these awesome sponsors to thank. And now for some news. Michael Neha spotted something very interesting in the latest insider build of Windows 11, an option to remove VB script from the OS. Michael reports once removed, as you'd expect, VB scripts no longer run. And you do have an option though to put it back again after you remove it. So at least it's not going to completely break it uh, forevermore. Uh, rightly, Michael reports that Microsoft's own deployment toolkit, MDT, uses VB script. And that is just a single example of something that uses VB script that would not work anymore if you do remove this. Of course, those in application packaging also likely use VB script based custom actions in their MSIs. So yet another thing that would break pretty widely for a lot of applications. One of the world's most widely used EHR products is basically a bunch of VB scripts cobbled together. As Michael states, while that option is there in test, it is unlikely that Microsoft will forcefully remove VB script anytime soon, but perhaps this is an early indication that they plan to announce end of life at some point in the future and they're preparing for that. The Verge has reported about a new Canary channel coming to Windows Insiders for anyone brave enough to test new features and changes first. On the Canary channel, Microsoft stated, quote, The new Canary channel is going to be the place to preview platform changes that require longer lead time before getting released to customers. Some examples of this include major changes to the Windows kernel, new APIs, etc. End quote. The Verge speculates this move may be in preparation for Windows 12. The new Canary channel will fall ahead of the current dev channel, and if you're currently in the dev channel and get automatically moved to the new Canary channel, you'll need to perform a clean install on Windows 11 to switch back to the dev channel. Microsoft now recommends current beta channel users should switch to the dev channel if they want to preview the latest Windows 11 features early. Windows Central reported on a since-deleted tweet from a person who has previously shared leaks relating to Intel hardware. The deleted tweet was reported to show Windows 12 is on the supported OS list for Intel's Meteor Lake S desktop chipsets, which may further the rumors that Windows 12 will make its way to the world in 2024. Obviously, a deleted tweet should be taken with a pinch of salt, but hey, Remember late last year when I reported on a deleted tweet about Tabs coming to Notepad? And then earlier this year, Tabs was announced for Notepad. Sometimes there is truth to these leaks. The Verge also reported on the deleted tweet this week with suggestions that there has been internal discussions ongoing within Intel about Windows 12 too. At the time of this recording, Nvidia acknowledged an issue causing high CPU utilization from NVIDIA drivers version 531.18, which was the latest release of their drivers a couple days ago. It was reported that NVIDIA containers were using 10% or more CPU after login or after closing games, and rolling back to previous drivers did fix the issue. However, about an hour before I started to record this episode of the podcast, NVIDIA released a driver hotfix that should address the issues. A reason why you may want to update your NVIDIA GPU drivers is that the new drivers will upscale old blurry web videos for those on RTX 30 and 40 series cards. The Verge reports the feature is called RTX Video Super Resolution. It is a new artificial intelligence 
upscaling technology from NVIDIA that works inside the Chrome or Edge browsers to improve any video in a browser by sharpening the edges of objects and reducing video artifacts. As stated already, this, this should work for any video, so that includes videos on services like Twitch and Netflix. NVIDIA will support videos between 360p and 1440p up to 144Hz in frame rate and upscale all the way up to 4K resolution. So it sounds pretty impressive. Microsoft had some nice little sizzle reel video that showed Bing AI integration with the Windows 11 search bar. But as windowscentral.com reports, while the video showed it as though it was AI chat integrated directly into the operating system search bar, it is really just populating a shortcut that launches Bing AI in an Edge browser session. So this looks like a fine piece of marketing by Microsoft that may have misled some. And on the topic of Bing AI and kind of just chatbots and chat GPT in general, there was a really great podcast episode by Alan Alda on his Clear and Vivid podcast last week discussing chat GPT and its potential for helping with certain jobs and where it may go in the future. It is worth checking out and I'll share a link with this episode, which is episode 272. Then you can find that at fivebytespodcast.com. LeapyComputer.com had an interesting article about malware being delivered via one files for OneNote. The files stand alone aren't delivering malware themselves, but they can contain documents that have other malicious files embedded hidden behind links within the documents. OneNote files with embedded files have been used in ransomware attacks before, so this is something to take seriously. Leaky Computer suggests the best way to prevent malicious Microsoft OneNote attachments from infecting Windows is to block the .one file extension at your secure mail gateways or mail servers. However, if that is not possible for your environment, you can also use Microsoft Office group policies to restrict the launching of embedded file attachments in Microsoft OneNote files. And for a full list of steps on how you can help prevent this, Check out this article, which I'll share a link to with this episode. Microsoft have made Outlook free for Mac users. No Office or Office 365 subscription is required from now. The free version of Outlook is ad supported and Ars Technica reports that the Mac version of the app will remain a native Mac app and will not move to a progressive web app. As such, it does not have the newer looking user interface that you may be familiar with on Windows but Microsoft have indicated that they are looking at redesigning Outlook for Mac in the future too. And finally, it was announced that the very first official EUC forum meeting will be taking place on the 25th of April in London. The meeting will be held at the Cavendish Conference Center, and it's said that there will be engaging content from a range of industry experts in the community and a mix of sessions from other EUC vendors too. So I believe I already covered it on a previous episode of the podcast, but the EUC forum is the coming together of the previous Citrix user group for the UK and also the AVD user group. So it would be kind of cool to see what kind of content is put on um, in this more general EUC forum. And best of luck to all those who attend and to the organizers too. And now this episode, scripts, tricks, and tips. The awesome Renko had a blog post where he did a really deep dive on an application hanging with a waiting cursor. And this is very, very deep. So it's really, really interesting to see kind of what this methodology um, was in troubleshooting this and what he came up with. So if you're interested in troubleshooting applications and application hanging issues in particular, uh, check out this blog post and I'll share it with this episode. Uh, I posted my own blog post, which was really just me ranting about speaking at conferences. And this was off the back of a pretty viral article, at least within Ireland, um, that someone was requested to speak or actually host a panel at the Web Summit coming up in Toronto. And when he asked if they would cover the expenses and flight and accommodation and all that stuff, they said no. <laughs> So he was just kind of complaining about the fact that this large tech conference that makes a lot of money was unwilling to even cover his expenses to take part. And that kind of led me on to uh, my little rant about speaking at tech conferences, granted smaller conferences than the Web Summit, but 
Um, it might be interesting if you've never actually participated or spoken at a tech conference yourself. Uh, you may be interested to hear what it's like. This week I saw that there was a PowerShell script shared to automate SysInternals Procmon filters, and the script adds functionality of dynamically specifying filters, which allows automation with a minimal performance impact. So pretty interesting to be able to do that programmatically. Attil Gherkin had a blog post on the tech community, the Microsoft site, on enabling the remote help feature and supporting users with Intune. So the remote help is something that I believe became generally available via the Intune suite on March 1st. So it's pretty new. And if you'd like to get started with that, check out this blog post. And finally, Michael Nihas, who I featured at the beginning of this week's episode, uh, also had a blog post on blocking Windows 11 moments within the operating system. So those moments are those, uh, I guess, highlights that they put into the menus within the operating system that could be quite annoying and really are not enterprise friendly. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the podcast. Thank you all so much for listening.